Hi, my name is Joshua Ramasher. I am the CEO of Stalinbosch University Launch Lab. Uh, we're an incubator uh, affiliated with the university here based out of Stalinbosch, South Africa. Uh, our, our mission is to transform seemingly impossible into world shaping companies. So we work primarily with the university as well as the local ecosystem to turn intellectual property, research, uh, even companies from the local ecosystem into products, companies, commercial viability, um, things that may reach the world at large. Um, I think of us as existing at the, as upstream in the entrepreneurial ecosystem as possible. Uh, we literally are taking something that is seemingly impossible and within 12 to 24 months, trying to turn that into a company that then can seek external funding, can find corporate partnerships, um, can scale outside of South Africa. So uh, that, that for us is focused on agriculture, ag tech, uh, could be things like medical, food science, things the university is very strong at. Uh, for me, my background actually is in clean energy. Um, I've been working and helping build primarily two companies across Sub-Saharan Africa over the last seven years. Um, before that, I was in investment banking in the United States for 11 or 12 years um, and have been a serial entrepreneur six different experiences in my background and part of coming to an incubator now is trying to help other people make creative mistakes um, my whole vision is to, to play a material role in helping 10 15 20 companies reach scale across africa uh, solving social problems with private sector solutions i'm here today to talk a little bit about an external perspective on funding in south africa I feel like I have a very unique perspective. I grew up uh, on Wall Street in New York and San Francisco in debt capital markets, primarily in structured products. So mortgages, asset-backed securities, CDOs, CLOs, uh, everything that, that uh, came out of the financial crisis and, all, and the like, uh, I was part of during that time. And that gave me a very unique understanding of how capital markets work. The mortgage market in the United States is the most liquid and largest market in the world. So understanding how those mechanisms work. I've then been a VP of corporate finance at a startup um, called Zola, Zola Electric. That was a clean energy company across Sub-Saharan Africa. I ran all of our corporate fundraising, uh, all of our partnerships, our business development for a few years there as we went from one country to four. Um, was able to help the company raise something like over 125 million USD across joint ventures, equity, uh, debt, convertibles, anything you can imagine. Uh, we raised capital in that manner. I then spent the last couple of years at a company called Phoenix International, uh, which is a solar home system company operating out of uh, Kampala, Uganda. We were acquired by Anji, the French utility, a couple of years ago, so I went through the acquisition. Um, actually saw funding from now the inside out. So working with a large corporate in order to fund uh, Pan-African business and that business scaled in a massive way. Uh, the company invested over 150 million USD in, in Phoenix and went from one market to six and, and had over 500,000 customers. I've now been in South Africa for six months, um, helping build Launch Lab as an incubator, helping connect our entrepreneurs with the funding universe, helping to serve as that middle uh, that middle person in terms of connecting our startups with entrepreneurs uh, as well as investors and corporates. Um, so I still am getting my feet under me in terms of how the SA landscape looks and works, um, but I would like to offer a few uh, insights from how South Africa compares to uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and then Europe and the US. And I would say that the majority of funding that we raised for the companies in Sub-Saharan Africa did come from uh, Europe and the United States, and that candidly South Africa was not a market that we ever looked at for our products. Uh, we were doing mostly rural off-grid solar. South Africa was not a target market, so I am uh, uniquely able to say that I understand Sub-Saharan Africa pretty well, but South Africa has been a whole new learning experience for me. So I just want to touch on a few of the, the questions that, uh, that have been asked and hopefully be able to shed some, some light on, on what you're going through in terms of funding and thinking about how to operate your company. Um, one of the questions was, do you see tech commercialization contributing to the South African economy over the next few years? My answer is it has to. Um, only something like 2% of global R&D ever becomes commercial. Um, so there's billions and billions of dollars every year spent at research, in research and development at universities that 98% of that never reaches the world. 
uh, here at Stellenbosch University, we're doing incredible things around uh, deep tech, blockchain, food science, engineering, medical. Uh, a lot of these things are research projects. A lot of them may never reach commercial viability, might, might not ever be companies, but at the same time, we, we owe it to the world to try to turn some of these ideas from research into commercial opportunities. I feel that my take on South Africa so far, um, and it's a respectful comment, is that South Africa used to be a bit of a country in Africa. Now it's becoming more of an African country. As we see things like ESCOM and load shedding, as we see the government and fiscal situation, um, these are common, common situations all across Africa. There's not enough revenue to operate the government. There are no uh, service delivery is very poor. And what that's led to in other parts of Africa, like Kenya, like uh, Nigeria, Uganda, is the fact the private sector has stepped in. The, the private sector has said the public sector is not going to provide clean water, they're not going to provide sanitation, they're not going to provide energy, therefore there must be private sector solutions. In South Africa, we have these incredible universities, like nothing I've ever seen across Africa and rivaling anything in Europe or US. Uh, if we are smart about how we want to do our R&D, about how we want to commercialize, we have to rely on these universities to be the core of, of, our, uh, of our startup entrepreneurial landscape. There's too many good people. There's too many great ideas. This is a knowledge region. And if you look at knowledge regions across the world using Silicon Valley as an analog, generally there is a very top quality university in the middle of all that. So I do believe that working as an incubator tied to a university with incredibly smart people, with funding, uh, with the, the overall entrepreneurial landscape that's necessary to grow companies it is critical to success. So when I look at Launch Lab, I want to be able to say in a couple of years that Stalinbosch is Africa's leading go-to destination for things like ag tech, uh, for things like food science, for things... Uh, like deep tech and satellites, and there's no reason that it cannot be. So I'm very, very bullish on the opportunity to turn research and development at universities into commercial opportunities. Uh, one of the next questions was coming into uh, South Africa as an American, what's your view on the funding landscape? Um, I will say I've only been here for six months, but a lot of my, my job and my work is to talk to people, entrepreneurs, investors, and the like, and understand that dynamic. It's also my background and also one of my value adds. Uh, I, my candid view is that the South African funding landscape is very small and very difficult. Um, there, it is very much a closed ecosystem. There's much less development finance uh, down here. I, I think because South Africa is considered a middle income country, uh, groups like say OPIC or USAID or EIB or AFDB are, are not as present here as where they are present in the rest of Africa. Um, I also feel like there was a, a much more of a close linkage in Sub-Saharan Africa, especially Kenya and Nigeria, to Europe and the United States in terms of funding. My experience thus far in South Africa is that there's uh, a limited number of funders, both angel, venture capital, private equity. Uh, they're primarily South African. They're primarily looking at South African companies and it feels like a very insulated environment. It does feel like there's much more demand for capital than there is supply of capital. Uh, it feels like the opportunity for risk capital, especially early, uh, seed, Series A is very low, that a lot of the investors, even if they are Series A investors, are effectively looking for uh, almost private equity type cash flows and returns. I will say that I, I think the model of trying to take Silicon Valley and bring it to Africa does not work. Um, companies cannot exist by spending, by having very negative cash flow from operations and trying to fill that in with cash flow from financing for years, the same way that uh, Silicon Valley does that. It's harder to build companies in Africa. There, you have to build the rails, you have to uh, have the logistics, things do take longer. So I do feel like what's happening in South Africa, I can't complain about it. If I was an investor, I think I'd want to see better cash flows, I want to see a, a de-risking, I want to see a pathway to liquidity. Um, I don't think that exists as much in Sub-Saharan Africa because there is more funding. Um, but there's a great Warren Buffett saying that you don't know who's swimming naked until the tide goes out. And with the global recession that we're, we're in right now and going to be very deep into for the next couple of months or years, we're gonna find who has business models that can sustain themselves and can attract external investment. The tide is going out very quickly. So I think the upside of that is that in South Africa, you have to be able to build a real company. Um, there isn't funding to uh, potentially just 
enable bad behavior to, to say, okay, it's series A and series B. I don't really know how I'm going to monetize this. I don't really know how I'm going to make this a viable business. I'll figure that out later. I'll just continue to fund myself with uh, venture capital or whatever else for years. And that does exist in sub-Saharan Africa. And I think it, it, it dilutes the market. I don't think it's good for the market. So I actually think that the, the, what investors are asking for in South Africa is not a bad thing. We just need more capital. Um, so our, our job at, at, at Stellenbosch University Launch Lab is to create viable businesses. When businesses leave the incubator, I would love for them to say they don't need external funding. They can self-fund, they can bootstrap, they have a business model that works, they have revenue. I do believe that if you're going to take external capital, the first dollar of capital that you take needs to be growth equity. It can't be product market fit. It can't be still trying to figure out what unit economics look like. External capital in South Africa should be growth equity. Um, if we're doing anything different than that, I think you're going to find negative outcomes. Um, so I really believe that we need to expand the solution set in terms of viable capital sources, but we also need to frankly build companies that are fundable. Um, I think entrepreneurs need to understand how investors work, and I think investors need to understand how entrepreneurs are, are really trying very hard to build businesses in what is a very tough environment. Um, so I, I think I'm hopeful that at, at SU Launch Lab, we can connect our South African companies to the world a bit more to increase the solution set of funding. At the same time, we're making a very concerted effort to create real businesses that have positive cash flow from operations that can be sustainable without external funding. Uh, the last question here is tell us a bit more about University Technology Fund, which is a, a fund coming out of SASME, and the role you will play with that in terms of tech transfer. Um, so the SASME has done an incredible job, I think, of really seeding early stage risk capital in South Africa. Uh, the University Technology Fund is a 155 million rand fund that is hoping to grow to three to 500 million uh, before closing next year. Its sole mandate is to invest in technology transfer coming out of university. This is, it's huge for the industry. Um, a lot of the things we work on here, as I said, they're seemingly impossible. They're very uh, incredible ideas that have longer incubation periods. These aren't, this isn't software coming out of a, out of Silicon Valley that can be sold to Google within six months. Um, this is, these are products that are product services, um, hardware, software that takes time to develop. So we do need to think about the world a bit differently in terms of our funding. Um, the UTF uh, run by Stocks and Strauss, I think is going to be an incredible vehicle to both provide early stage grant capital for new ideas as well as provide that, that almost value of death type capital that will get companies from uh, pilot to something that can attract external funding. So I look at the UTF as a critical factor in creating a viable ecosystem to bring commercial, commercial viability out of universities. I'm working very, very closely with, with SASME, with Stocks and Strauss, with the UTF in order to create pipeline, in order to create viable companies that have great data rooms that really understand their financial viability. And I, I look at us again as taking something from zero to one. We're going from seemingly impossible to a company. Uh, if we do our job well, that company then gets passed along to UTF. Um, I do think we need to have other potential investors that could be corporates, that could be uh, companies, uh, investors outside of Africa in Europe and the United States who could also invest in these companies. But if nothing else, we now have a key uh, link in the value chain to say something can come out of the university, it can go to Launch Lab, it can go through the UTF, and hopefully by the time it comes out of the UTF, it's either commercially viable and self-fundable uh, or self-sustaining, or it can access additional capital from external partners in the US, Europe, Africa, wherever that may be. So in closing, uh, I think we really need to concentrate on building private sector businesses in South Africa that are tackling public sector deficiencies. That's going to continue over the next five and 10 years. That presents a massive opportunity. Uh, at the same time, we really have to be cognizant about how we are bringing technology out of these universities. How are we commercializing that? How are we creating viable business models? Um, as load shedding happens now, we can see that there, there is a massive opportunity for the private sector to step up. Uh, at Stombosch University Launch Lab, we feel that opportunity is massive and we want to be part of the proactive solution of creating excellent companies that can be scalable across South Africa and the world. So I thank you for your time. I'm happy to take any questions. 
Uh, I believe that the, uh, the OCFO will be distributing our email addresses and our contact information. Uh, we're looking for great partners, great investors, uh, great entrepreneurs to come help us uh, transform seemingly impossible into world shaping. So thank you for your time. Hey, Lo here, one of the founders of Outsource CFO. If you enjoyed this video, make it official. Click subscribe.